Imagine yourself in a huge crowd, standing shoulder to shoulder with hundreds of people. Everyone wants to move at random, to right and left, constantly, and what's more, in pitch darkness. Could you move without bumping into anyone else? Of course not. These movements, quite impossible for us, are easy for fish because they have been created with a sensory system known as the lateral line, which consists of points or dotted lines stretching along both sides of the body. Sensory cells are located in a canal beneath the skin. The fish immediately determines the slightest change in external pressure. Eddies in the water, the strength and direction of the current, all thanks to these lateral lines. It can therefore perceive the presence of an enemy or an obstacle before it sees it. It can locate prey or predators and find its way in the water currents. The lateral lines are particularly sensitive to low frequency vibrations nearby so fish can instantly detect footsteps along the shore or a predator driving under the surface of the water and take appropriate evasive precautions. Nearby objects reflect the waves reaching them. In this way, the ripples that return after a wave strikes the shore reach the fish's body at very narrow intervals. Thanks to its lateral lines, the fish analyzes these time differentials and forms an image of its surroundings from the information thus obtained. To obtain more information, the fish can simply swim faster and give rise to more waves. The system functions so perfectly as to let fish perform a highly detailed scan. For example, in order to be able to see in the totally pitch dark water in which it lives, the Mexican blind cave fish is totally dependent on its lateral lines. Despite having no eyes, it can detect objects smaller than a pinhead. Fish swimming in large schools, particularly in muddy waters with low visibility, make use of their lateral lines in order to maneuver quickly without bumping into each other. These sensory organs have a very complex structure and it's of course impossible for such a system to form by chance, gradually, over the course of eons. The system has to emerge all at once if fish are to survive. This clearly supports the fossil record, revealing that fish did not come into being by evolving through gradual changes, as evolutionists claim, but when God created them, flawless and perfect. If evolutionists need to show that one species turned into another, then they need to produce evidence in the form of fossils of intermediate forms that show these different species allegedly evolving into one another. Any theory that maintains that jellyfish developed into fish, fish into reptiles, and reptiles into birds and mammals must unearth fossils to demonstrate that this actually occurred. Darwin admitted as much 
but wrote that there must be countless specimens of such fossils, although none were actually available at the time. Yet in the intervening 150 years, no intermediate form has been discovered. There are some 100 million fossils from all over the world in thousands of museums and collections. Each of these belongs to a species separated from every other by definitive features and unique structures. No fossils of half-fish, semi-amphibians, half-dinosaur, half-birds, or half-ape, half-humans of the kind sought by evolutionists have ever been found. The evolutionist fossil expert Derek W. Ager admits as such. The point emerges that if we examine the fossil record in detail, whether at the level of orders or of species, we find, over and over again, not gradual evolution, but the sudden explosion of one group at the expense of another.